Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome here for the very first time. Tonight, today I'm very excited because I'm going to show you what I think is the best picture that I've ever captured of the Pelican Nebula. I, I worked on it for two nights earlier this week. I was very excited just to be able to get to go out. This summer has been horrible for just being clouded over or bad skies and I've really had very little imaging time but I finally got two nights collected 13 total hours of data using my Orion ED80T and my ZWO 183MC Pro camera along with the um, Optolong L-Extreme filter. And I really like this filter. And uh, uh, you're going to see, man, it just came out to be an incredible picture. Before I do that, I'm going to show you a little bit of how I've used Nina to get my... Um, a setup. So after I do my polar alignment in sharp cap, which I'm not going to show you, I, I've, I've done other videos on that, but then I'm going to show you how I do use a, a little feature in Nina to quickly get a star alignment and then get focused and also how I've started to use the manual or the manual rotator feature in Nita. If you're not familiar with that, I'm going to give you a brief expl explanation of it when I come back. And then in the capture portion of the video, I'm going to show you how it actually works when you are getting set up and getting lined up uh, for your imaging. And so this will be a little bit of a tutorial on Nina, but also then uh, hopefully you'll stick around to the end and take a look at this image because I'm telling you, this is the best image that I've ever taken and I'm really excited about it and uh, I think you will enjoy it as well. Again, if you enjoy this video, please do me a favor, click on like and subscribe so that you will get, uh, so um, uh, that you'll get um, uh, notifications when I put other videos up and of course share it with your friends. I'm trying to get, I'm a little over 700 subscribers now. I'd like to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2021 which would be an incredible uh, accomplishment uh, for me just doing this in my part time and spare time. So uh, if you enjoy it please do me a favor and subscribe and share it with your friends. I'll be right back and we'll take a look at how I got this this uh, imaging uh, plan set up in Nina and use the auto, um, the, the manual rotator feature uh, as well. So stick around, I'll be right back. Okay, before we get into some of the capture information and look at the final picture, I do want to just uh, go here to Stellarium real quickly and show you where the Pelican Nebula is located in the night sky. Here we are looking sort of to the northeast. Here is the uh, star, right? well, let me go in here. Here's the star Deneb, which is fairly easy to find and probably a star that many of you use for alignment purposes. And so if you can find Deneb, it's really easy to find the Pelican Nebula. This is an area that has an immense amount of, of nebulosity around it and of course there are a number of very familiar uh, nebulae in this particular area probably the most uh, famous and perhaps one of the more well-known ones is the uh, the north american nebula which is right here and the Pelican Nebula is right next door. It's this area right in here. And uh, I guess if we uh, maybe um, look at it from a different angle, as you'll see here on the picture that I'm, uh, we'll show you in a few minutes, um, it looks sort of like a pelican. This is about 1,800 light years away. It's um, an, an immense area of hydrogen-2 gas. What's happening here is the uh, hydrogen is being ionized and is caused to glow. And so it makes a really, really interesting uh, picture when it finally comes out. And so I love these kind of areas. I've been focusing around in this area around Cygnus for um 
you know, for a while now, quite frankly, in astrophotography, it's a really good place to uh, uh, find a lot of interesting things to image. And so let's go over and I want to show you a real quick feature that I've used in Nina real quick, show you how to set up uh, a manual rotation. And then later on, you'll see how I use it in the process of taking this picture. So stick around. Okay, in the capture video that I'm about to show you, one thing you're going to see is Nina will walk me through the steps of manually rotating my camera. And I want to show you something, how you need to turn that feature on if you decide to use it. It's really not very hard at all. First of all, first of all you want to come over here into your equipment tab and you want to come to focuser, I'm sorry, not focuser, rotator. And up here, you want to click on manual rotator, and that will turn it on. And then um, the next thing you've got to do is if you go over here to options and under your plate solving uh, tab, under rotation tolerance. Now you can set this to whatever you want. I've got it set at two degrees. That way, if my rotation is within two degrees, Nina will move on in the sequence process. If not, it's going to calculate how far I'm off and it's going to tell me how many degrees clockwise or counterclockwise to manually rotate the camera. And what it will do is it'll take another picture it will then measure it. If you've got to adjust it a little bit more, it'll tell you, you know, turn the camera five degrees counterclockwise. And you make a little fine adjustment with the camera, take another picture, and then it will just simply walk you through the steps till you get within two degrees. Now, you can make it less than two degrees if you want to. You can set it to whatever you'd like. I find it gets a little bit more fiddly, and so I really don't do that. But you're going to see me do that in a little while. When I'm when I'm starting to run my sequence, you're going to see that I've got to adjust the camera a little bit. So I wanted to show you how to set that up in Nina if you choose to use it. Okay, let's go over and let's talk a little bit more about this imaging sequence. All right, finally, after what seems like forever, I'm going to get an opportunity tonight to do some imaging. And what I'm going to work on tonight, uh, as I was looking through some of the different uh, emission nebula and bright nebula that would be out tonight, the reason I'm going to focus, by the way, on bright nebula is because tonight is going to be a nearly full moon. It's going to be a really bright moon. So I've put in the Optolong L Extreme filter, and so I'm going to basically be shooting in HA tonight. And uh, so I'm going to focus on, um, or on narrow band, I should say, because I'm going to I'm going to actually capture HA and some O3 data. And what I decided to focus on was the Pelican Nebula, basically because I've never imaged it before, and it's going to be high in the night sky pretty much all evening long. So I set that over in the Framing Assistant, and... Um, I'm going to uh, drag this down just a little bit to kind of center it up a little bit better. Here you can see the Pelican Nebula, pretty good in the frame. I'm going to set it like about right there. And then um, you'll notice that I've got my rotation set at 90 degrees, and that's going to give me a nice framing on it. I wanted to give myself a little bit of area around it. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and take that over and transfer this over into the sequence. I'm just going to click on, click on replace as sequence target. And you'll notice then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on start guiding, slew to target, center on target. I'm going to autofocus on start and after HFR increase. And what I'm planning to do is I'm going to set this up to shoot about 90 subframes. It's going to be 95 minute subframes. Um, I'm going to dither every other frame and at a gain of 140 and an offset of 10. And that works pretty good for my camera. Um, one thing about this that I will note, if I go over here, and I probably can show this to you in this scrambled mess that is my Stellarium screen, here is the Pelican Nebula. And this is framed up roughly uh, how it's going to look. But if you'll notice, here in a few hours, 
I'm going to cross the meridian. Before this is done imaging tonight, I'm going to actually cross the meridian. In fact, I can go over here and I can show you that. On my imaging tab, it will show you that I am going to uh, be at the meridian in 6 hours and 53 minutes. And so because of that, I wanted to double check and make sure that over here in the options, under, gen or under um, equipment, no, under imaging, sorry, under imaging on the options tab, that I have my auto meridian flip turned on. That way I don't have to come back out. I don't have to mess with it. Um, once you get that set up in, in uh, Nina, it is really simple. And so you'll notice that I've got it enabled and I got it one minute after the meridian. Uh, it will recenter after the flip. It will settle uh, the scope for 10 seconds after, and then it will auto focus after the flip. And then I'll start back right back into my sequencing. So that's the plan. It looks like here, if I started imaging right now, but it's about an hour before uh, it gets, it's going to be dark enough for me to start imaging, that I would finish up at about four o'clock in the morning. It's actually going to be closer to five, maybe around 530 when this finishes up. Uh, but that's okay. It's going to run and it will finish it up. And uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a pretty good image of the Pelican Nebula. Okay, uh, we'll come back in a couple of moments when I, when I get ready to take the first sub. Okay, I just po finished doing my polar alignment in sharp cap, and I wanted to show you something that I do over here. Uh, over on the imaging tab, if you come up here and cl click manual focus targets, it'll put this little tab down here, and you can select various stars that are available to you to do your manual focus. I find that this is a good way to do an initial slew um, and then take a quick picture. Now, I won't be lined up. I haven't done any star alignment yet, okay? So I'm going to take just a quick, uh, I'll go ahead and take a 10-second uh, uh, picture here. And I'll show you how I can do a quick star alignment and then go ahead and be ready to do my initial focus. Now, I have an autofocuser, and I should be pretty close, but I always like to uh, to use the Batnoff mask at the beginning just to make sure I'm, I'm in pretty close. So this is the area. Now, you can see Vega hasn't shown up here, um, and that's because I haven't done my star alignment. But if I go over to Plate Solve, and I go over and I go ahead and have sick, uh, Sync and re to Target, and just click go, what it will do is it's going to take a quick exposure. Actually, it's going to take a 12-second exposure. If you ask me why those are so long, it's because I have that L-Extreme filter in, and, and that really means you got to take a little bit longer uh, picture um, to really have anything come out because it really dims the stars down. Okay, you can see it's plate solved that, and of course, it shows you the telescope is not inside the tolerance. If I went over here to image, you could actually watch it do this. Now it's going to go ahead and take, in just a second, after it's done settling, it'll take another 12-second picture. And I should be much closer to Vega this time. It might be that it's dead on, but we'll see. Give it just a second here. And what it's going to do is it's going to plate solve, and it's going to get me right back in line with that uh, star. And then what I can do is go ahead and use my Batonoff mask. Look at that. It's centered up. Very, very good. It's not inside the telescope of uh, the uh, tolerances, so it's going to move it a little bit. If I, if I put these crosshairs up there, you can see it's not quite centered. And so what it's going to do is it's going to move it, and it's going to get it centered up for me. That's going to get my initial star alignment done with my telescope. And then I can go over, and I can flip over, and you go to a live view, and use the Batonoff mask to get myself uh, in pretty good shape as far as my focus goes. I'm going to pause this for just a second, and then we'll come back with the Batonoff mask on. Okay, I'm going to show this to you, and this blows my mind. Uh, this is a testimony to how good uh, this Orion ED80T is. I have not imaged for over a month with this setup. I put it up tonight. I've set it up. I've just flown over to Vega. All I've done, I haven't done any focus adjustment at all. All I did was put on the Batonoff mask and look how close it is to being in focus. 
that's close enough to, to get to run my autofocus routine. I'm an, I'm amazed by that. But um, um, all right, we're ready to get started shooting. So I'm going to pause this for just a second, take the baton off mask off. I'm going to move my computer and equipment over into the garage where I can monitor it. And we're going to get started shooting. We'll be back with the first uh, sub here in just a couple of minutes. I thought I'd go ahead and stop here and just show you a real quick little feature in Nina that I think is pretty cool. Uh, right now, the sequence is running through plate solving, getting me framed. Um, and it's taking a couple of pictures and it's adjusting my camera rotation. The first image that, he that it took, I was about... Oh, I was about 90 degrees off. I was a long ways off. So I made, went out and I turned the, counter, the camera counterclockwise, come back in, pressed OK. It's taken a second picture, and now it's telling me that I'm 2.98 degrees counterclockwise. And uh, what, I mean, what it means, I've got to go out and turn it just a slight bit. I'm going to press OK, and what it's going to do is it's going to take another picture and it's going to help me to get within, I've set my uh, tolerance on this for uh, two degrees. And so if I'm within two degrees of my rotation, then I'm happy with that. I don't want to fool with it uh, much more than that. But you'll see it's plate solved. Everything is lined up correctly. And so um, we're in good shape. Okay. And so um, uh, it's going to go ahead and do my autofocus. But I notice that something's going on with my... Um, Hmm. Something was going on here with my uh, uh, my P my PhD. For some reason, my camera had come undone. So okay, it's gone now, and we should be good. And now Nina should start um, uh, helping me get my guiding set up and get guiding going. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, let it begin the loop. Make sure that it is on. Uh, Auto star. There we go. And so it'll start guiding. And now it's going to go ahead and run through the sequence. It's going to take care of my autofocus. And then in a couple of minutes, we'll have our first image up. And, and hopefully it's going to look good. So let me pause this. Okay, you can see here we're about 30 seconds away from the first subframe coming up, the first of 90 subframes. And um, so far, my guiding is looking pretty good. The total RMS air down here is uh, 0 0.17, and so I'm pretty happy with that. That's looking pretty good. Um, and so I'm hoping this first sub is going to come out pretty good. Let's take a look. Let's de-bearing it. There we go. Oh, that looks great. This is framed up just the way I wanted it to be. You can see the Pelican Nebula here. A um, couple pretty bright stars. You can see those halos around those stars. We'll probably have to deal with those in processing. That's a that's something that the uh, L Extreme filter really puts on there a great deal, and um, it's just it's just part of having that kind of filter. But that is looking really good. Um, Lots of lots of detail in there. Can't wait to get this stacked and take a look at it. But there you can see the Pelican Nebula. Um, we're going to go ahead and let this thing run. I'm going to go in the house. I'm going to grab me a little bite to eat. I'm going to uh, probably watch a little TV, fall asleep. And at 5 a.m., it looks like uh, we're going to have this done. Oh, and it's been a finish time. is 4 a.m., 4, 5, 16 a.m. So I'm going to set my alarm for about... Uh, 4:30. That will give it time to uh, uh, warm up the the um, uh, warm up the camera, return to park, and uh, then I'll come back up, take all the equipment down. We will stack it, and uh, hopefully we'll have a pretty good image. So, um, all right. Well, uh, next thing we'll do, we'll process this thing. So, uh, bye for now. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, let me show you here in Astro Pixel Processor what I've got. I've got a total of 147 light frames, uh, 20 flats, 20 dark flats, and 55 darks um, that I captured. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these because I captured it with the uh, L Pro or the L Extreme filter rather. I can split the two channels up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave pattern over here at supported. 
the algorithm, I'm going to come down and use um, HA03 extract HA, click on force um, uh, bear uh, X trans CFA. One thing I found that works best for my data, now you can just try this out. I went over to integrate and I leave everything pretty much the same. I do click on automatic uh, um, on integrate. I use average. I come over here. I go to Windsorized rejection, local normalization rejection. Um, on enable MBB multiband blending, I usually take that up to 10%. That reduces some of the artifacts around the edges of my uh, picture. And then what I've done is I've started changing droplet size here to 1.25. And I find that works a little bit better for me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the HA channel. And then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go back over to once it's finished. I'm going to go back to the zero tab. I'm going to click on uh, HA03 extract and extract out the 03 data. And then I'm going to use the combined RGB to complete that. And um, when you see what the results were um, uh, here in a moment, you'll be amazed. But uh, that's how I set it up here in Astro Pixel Processor. Okay, so after I've got all the data stacked, I'm going to go over here to Combine RGB. I'm going to go up here to Add Channel. And what I'm going to select, well, let me, let me go back here for a second. I'm going to select uh, from this list here, there's a number of formulas that you can use. I'm going to go to H002, and then I'm going to go to Add Channel, and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find my HA file. Select hydrogen alpha here, click on OK. Add channel. Now I want to add my O3 uh, data, which is, uh, I've got all of these uh, files uh, here, right here. Uh, IC570 O3 RGB session. Now I'm going to click on oxygen 3, click on OK. And then what I can do here is I'm going to go to, I believe, Add Scale. I'm going to click on Calculate. Okay. And there is my combined image. And you know, you can see I'm going to have to crop it out a little bit. I've got some artifacts, stacking artifacts out around the edges. But overall, this is a really good start. And uh, look what uh, I've got here. I've got lots of detail here in the picture. By the way, that's kind of why I like this particular formula, this H002 formula in Astro Pixel Processor. Um, if I use some of the other ones, you, I didn't get as much detail. I've tried it out. Uh, but... Um, I really like this starting look because I can see some of the details here of these gas clouds, some of these fingers coming out of the nebula. So this is a place to start. Once I've got, um, maybe make a few saturation adjustments and a few things like that, I'm going to save all of this. I'm going to take it over to Photoshop. I'm going to do a little bit more sharpening, a little bit of noise reduction, maybe adjust the color balance just a little bit, and you are going to see the final result. Let me show you that final image. Okay, let me go over to Photoshop here. This is the final image that I came up with. Um, and I really like this. I used a little bit of a plugin called uh, APFR. Um, this is a, um, uh, a, um, a little app that will help sharpen things up. You can get it from Picture Instruments if you just search for it. It's by Christopher Caltesis. I use this to sharpen up the image a little bit. I went in, I played with the color balance just a little bit. I added these star spikes, and the reason that I did that, uh, my buddy Charles hates when I add in uh, star spikes. So I do it all the time to annoy him. But there's actually another reason. Using the L Pro or the L Extreme filter, the Optolong L Extreme filter, around really bright stars, you tend to get a little bit of a halo. And I've I've 
I've been searching around, finding ways to deal with that and sort of process that out. I really haven't found a way that has worked well for me. So what I've done is just I kind of come in and I add a star spike there. And I just think it makes it look a little bit better than having a bright halo around the star. You'll also notice there's a little bit of a bluish tint to the stars. That's a product of the um, L Extreme filter as well. Again, there's things that people do to kind of adjust for that, but you don't get a true star color when you're using uh, some of this narrow band imaging techniques. But anyways, I got to be honest with you. This is the best picture that I've ever taken of any object in the night sky. I love the detail up in here. You can see a lot of the uh, sort of folds and ripples that are going through these clouds, these long fingers that are sticking out uh, here. Uh, from what I understand, that is areas where new star formation is occurring. That In this entire region, that's what's happening. New stars are being formed out of all of this gas. And so this whole thing just fascinates me. I think it's uh, uh, the best picture that I've ever taken. And uh, it's, a, it's a really fascinating area. So listen, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the picture. Um, oh, by the way, you notice there's a little bit of the oxygen standing out. Most of this is hydrogen gas, but you can see a little bit of these uh, purples and blues that are coming through the nebula. That's oxygen. And so um, uh, that comes out, um, again, a lot of detail in the picture. I'm really, really, really proud of it and excited about it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, if you did, please click on subscribe. Uh, and then click on the thumbs up button to give me a like and then share it with your friends. And I look forward to seeing you back here next week. I'm hoping that we'll have clear skies. I hope you have clear skies wherever you're at and we can get back out there and do some more imaging. Thanks for tuning in today.